I'm gonna to present to you a bunch of ways in which people are damaging and destroying their bikes. These are things that we're seeing far too often and that's why I'm keen to point them out to you. Also, a lot of them are the result of tech that's come out in the last couple of years so people aren't always aware. So before you carry on destroying your bike, watch this video. First on our list, turbo salt. I don't mean like turbocharged salt, although it might as well be. I'm talking about salt that comes from sweat as a result of riding indoors. So indoor training has grown in popularity. Smart trainers have made it so much better. People are doing it way more. And what they don't realize is that when they're sweating a lot indoors, that sweat is dripping all over the bike and it's ingressing into places where it causes huge damage. It can actually write off bikes. So the sweat can ingress into the headset and it also can ingress into the bar tape, under the bar tape and onto the handlebars. Now if left uncleaned or if you're not preventing your sweat dripping into these areas, what it can then do is it can form like a salt crust which just eats away at your components and we've seen handlebars when the bar tape is removed the carbon or alloy handlebar has just been corroded and eaten away to the point where it just snaps. Um, or it can cause catastrophic failure while you're riding. It's also just going to eat your bearings in your headset. So to avoid this, put some sort of protector down in front of you that stops sweat dripping into your headset. Wipe your bike after use and be prepared to just change your bar tape periodically on the bike that you're using on an indoor trainer. Other things that can help mitigate this are, and this is a top tip, using a dehumidifier in your turbo training room or where you store your bike. Um, as a result, that will help remove the moisture and then stop the corrosion being as potent and it'll stop rust and things like that. But as long as you're aware of this and the potential dangers of it, you can stop it from damaging your bike. Next up is people washing their bikes badly and damaging them. This really, really annoys me. It really does my head in because there's so much bad information out there about how to wash your bike. I use WD-40 for the lubricant as well as the degreaser. Ah! You don't wash your car in, in, in the way in which a lot of people wash their bikes. So why would you wash your bike like that? So I'm talking about doing a contact wash with a, an abrasive brush. This is so annoying. Abrasive like coarse brushes, they're gonna scratch and mar the paint on your bike as they would on a car. They're gonna cause little micro scratches in the lacquer, which is gonna cause it to, to dull and just look crap. And it, it's gonna age your bike faster. So if you go and sell it in the future, it's, it's not gonna be worth as much. It's not gonna look as nice. So instead, what you should be doing is a non-contact pre-wash and then removing all, a lot of the dirt so that you don't create that sort of wet sandpaper as you start then contact washing dirt and rubbing it into the frame. And then do a contact wash, but with a proper bike washing uh, surfactant cleaning product and a nice soft mitt. Now, don't when I say a proper bike wash product, I mean don't use washing up liquid. Washing up liquid, it's great, it's cheap and it's great for cleaning that stubborn casserole dish with your burnt on dinner, but it's not good for using on bike lacquer, bike surfaces. The first thing I do when I get in is immediately fill a bucket of hot water with washing up liquid. You know, car, you wouldn't use it on your car. It's gonna mar it, it's gonna dull it, it's gonna damage the lacquer, it's gonna take off any wax or special stuff that you put on to help keep the paint cleaner for longer. It's just bad news, just don't use it. It's, too, it's just too powerful. You want something that's got surfactants that are specially formulated for use on a bike. Okay, rant over. On to the next rant. Using the wrong lube and in the wrong places see this all the time, but it's amazing how many people who are really good cyclists just don't have a clue about lubing. So first up, when you're lubing your chain, you wanna lube the links and the rollers. You don't want lube on the outside plates of the chain. You don't want lube all over the cassette. Excess lube is bad news. It's just gonna attract dirt and cause unnecessary and accelerated wear of your expensive components like your chain rings, your cassette, and your chain. And all this stuff is super expensive, so we don't wanna do that. Next up is putting lube on top, or the wrong type of lube, on top of lube that's already there. By putting too much lube on and lube on top of, fresh lube on top of dirty lube, you're again attracting too much dirt, which is creating this grinding paste and this buildup of lube, which is just 
gonna cause the accelerated wear, cost you money. What you want to do is ideally wax your chain, big fan of it because not just the, the fact that it makes your drivetrain faster, but the fact that it you know, causes lower rates of wear. And it's also very good in dry conditions because it doesn't attract dust and dirt. However, it does take quite a lot of time and not everyone can be prepared to wax their chains and they might not have the setup or the time or the inclination. Furthermore, if you're riding in purely wet conditions, using a wet lube is probably gonna be advantageous. However, properly cleaning and degreasing your chain and then applying fresh lube rather than lube on top of lube is the way to go. You can do it really quickly with a good degreaser and if you're not prepared to wax your chain to, in the full traditional sense, I would suggest using a drip-on wax product like Silk is Super Secret. It's the next best thing. It's not quite as good as a full-on wax because it doesn't penetrate as much into the links and rollers to the same degree as waxing your chain in a hot melt wax, but it is better than a dry lube and it doesn't attract the dirt in the way that wet lubes and dry lubes do. So yeah, a drip on wax, that's the way to go. Next is brake contamination. Now, the, the, the principal reason why this absolutely winds me up and I, oh God, is because of the noise, like the noise pollution that's created from disc brakes squealing because they're contaminated. And so more often than not, it's just easily avoided. So what, something I see people do all too often is touch brake rotors with their fingers. The oil that's on your skin is enough to contaminate a braking surface of a brake rotor, which is then gonna cause it to squeal. Next up is just spraying cleaning chemicals, which leave residue all over your brake rotors. People spraying like PTFE sprays around to lubricate their bike, which is already like, ah! God, why are you doing that? And they're spraying it around like it's deodorant or Febreze and it's just, they're getting overspray mist going on the rotors and the brake pads, which is again, contaminating them, causing them to squeal. It makes them less effective. It can, if you actually get a load of sort of oil or lubrication on there, it can be dangerous because your brake isn't gonna stop in time. And then it's gonna cause you to have to replace your rotors or your pads more frequently because you're gonna have to then rub down your pads to decontaminate them and take some of the surface off with some sandpaper. Ooh, just when you're cleaning your, your bike, just be wary of those, right? If potentially take your wheels out if you're gonna be spraying stuff around, apart from disc brake cleaner, on the rotors. Oh, God. Next up is damage from bike bags and bar bags. Look, I understand that some of you are hipsters and you need somewhere on your bike where you can carry your artisanal beard grooming products and your collection of vinyl from bands that nobody else has heard of and your craft ale supplies. But when you put your bike bags on, they often rub against the frame, causing like damage to the paintwork. And in some cases it can rub through the paint and the lacquer and just damage the actual frame material underneath. This isn't just unsightly, but it's causing structural damage in some cases to the bike. And it's, oh, it's just, oh, why would you do it? So this is exacerbated when you're in wet conditions and also your bike is dirty. Now the solution to this is simple. Just apply some paint protection film to your bike. Um, you can buy this cheaply in sheets, 3M make it, and it's just clear sheets and you can cut it to size and you can apply it in key areas where your bike uh, bags and straps from those bags are making contact with your frame. It's just gonna save you a bunch of money in the long run, 100% do it, easy. And lastly, this is something that I see on group rides at cafe stops all the time, and it, oh God, it is just the most annoying, oh, oh God. <sighs> Leaning your bike up against the, the top tube or the, the seat stay or the head tube in a way that's gonna scratch it and damage it. When I see this, it's just like, ah, ah, ah. Just lean your bike up against like the hoods or the bar tape or 
the saddle or the, the rear tire, something that's soft where it's not gonna damage the frame and the paint. Oh, if I see any bike that's like instant, and I, I can speak for Alex too, if we see any bike, which we see all too often, that are like bike vault submissions where they're lent against the top tube, it's an instant no entry to the bike vault. So there you've been warned. Right, I hope you found this video useful and from watching this, you can stop destroying your bike. Let us know your other suggestions in the comments for things where people are destroying their bikes and that are really annoying. And um, well, I'll see you in the next one. Love you, bye.